so input output uh, for example we have a java program here okay. from our java program we want to read from various devices or write to various devices okay like input devices and output devices from our java program we want to read and write like this one is a keyboard joystick and your hard disk hard disk is also input and output both right yeah similarly right left hand side console output devices printer and we have the hard disk okay so okay. if you want to read from this hardware okay or write to this hardware you are a java programmer okay so mm -hmm. um, we should have another layer in between these things to make things easier okay mm -hmm. in between this hardware and the java there should be some layer in between this so that it will be easier for us right yeah like we can have stream objects connected with these devices and then we can read from the stream objects like this we have stream objects and we read from the stream objects okay rather than reading from the hardware directly we can do like this yeah. it is more convenient okay mm -hmm. because this objects what what we are talking about is from the api okay of java itself so we we are mm, good with this working with this apis of java okay we have less knowledge regarding the hardware we cannot directly interact with the hardware we need some stream objects connected with the hardware and we read from the stream objects okay yeah. similarly if you want to write on a console or a printer or a hard disk okay this concept will help us again stream objects connected with these devices and writing on the stream objects rather on the hardware okay Okay. Okay. Stream objects. What's the meaning of the stream objects? Actually, means there may be some stream classes whose objects we are talking about, right? Yeah. So there are input stream classes and output stream classes whose objects we are talking about. Okay. Objects. And here, left hand side is output stream objects. <laughs> So in the java.io package we have several classes okay stream classes whose objects we have to create here and we are going to interact with the stream objects rather than the devices directly okay mm -hmm. the another mm, good thing about this technique is like these stream objects have certain co uh, function in common okay so we can use mm -hmm. the same read function on each of the stream object are you getting Okay. it may be you are reading from a robot or you are reading from a keyboard mm -hmm. it's both the same to you okay similarly when you are writing on a printer or a hard disk or a console or whatever when you are interacting with the stream object you interact using the write function okay yeah right 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 it will take some parameter anyhow so why how is it possible that we have the same way of accessibility here read 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 how could it be possible it was possible because uh, the stream classes or objects that we are talking about may have actually implemented certain interface or extended certain abstract class okay are you getting yeah means they may be following certain frame framework they may be implementing or extending one particular class okay yeah mm -hmm. yeah take a screenshot of this please yeah. okay so i'm going to the next slide you have taken right yeah okay so the classification of the stream classes let's see so streams mm -hmm. are of two types one it one is byte based one is character based byte based stream classes and character based 
when do you use the write based mm, like, like when you want to read from a movie file for example a movie clip from your java program you want to read from a movie clip clip okay so okay. the movie consists of bytes not characters right yeah. so you will be use a byte based stream object connected with the movie file then you start reading from it okay mm -hmm. but if you want to read or write on a text file that is characters okay has characters in it then you use a character based stream object connected with that file then you start reading or writing characters okay so okay. under the byte based classification or streams we have two main classes here abstract classes abstract class input stream okay mm -hmm. <laughs> and another class called abstract class output stream so what is an abstract class <coughs> which has one abstract method at least one abstract which can, method which, right which, which cannot the object cannot be created of that class. Okay, sorry, I put a brackets. Okay, abstract class input stream, abstract class output stream, and similarly for the character based also we have abstract class reader and abstract class writer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we know that abstract class contains at least one abstract function. So what are the abstract functions within these abstract classes? Abstract class input stream is an abstract method called read. Abstract okay. int read is the read function. And what does it do actually? Okay, let, let's first write down what are the methods available. Abstract, abstract void write with an integer within, okay? It will take an mm -hmm. integer. Similarly, for the reader, abstract in read and same thing, same type signature, abstract mm -hmm. void write. So, let's see what this read function does actually. It reads one byte at a time and returns the integer equivalent, okay? reads one byte at a time and returns the int equivalent okay and what does the write function do it it writes the byte equivalent of the integer provided okay and what about the left hand side so the read function reads one char at a time at a time and returns what the integer equivalent okay yeah. and here our write function does what writes writes the okay byte equivalent is uh, sorry character equivalent right mm -hmm. equivalent of the integer provided okay. understood isn't it yeah. okay so if you are putting a, okay what about this left hand side uh, integer uh, byte equivalent of integer provided means what or integer equivalent of the byte read means what byte and integer means how do you convert one byte equivalent to eight bits right yeah eight bits oh. zero one one zero eight zero one may be converted from binary to decimal right isn't it yeah, yeah. same way for the right hand side <coughs> you are passing 65 you want to write 65 that is the integer mm -hmm. equivalent of a is it? it writes a yeah yeah so yeah please take a screenshot of this so these are the main four abstract classes at the top of the hierarchy okay and rest of the mm -hmm. subclasses, rest of the stream classes are actually subclasses of any of these four classes. Okay. Yeah.
Okay. So it is for sure that you know in Go Java, if you are going to subclass an abstract class, you have to provide implementation of all the abstract functions. So the four okay. uh, abstract classes having read and write, these are the super classes, and any subclasses you see must be having either the read function or the write function, isn't it? Depending yeah. upon whom it is subclassing to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So please take a screenshot. Take yeah. A... yeah. So now, what are the subclasses available here in stream play based subclasses? What are they available? Let's see. So subclasses. Byte based, okay, and subclasses of character based. So, one B here subclasses of byte based and character based. For example, we have file input stream. file output stream okay buffered input stream buffered output stream print stream and some other classes are there okay i'm not writing everything here we have file reader file writer file and uh, sorry buffered buffered reader buffered writer and print writer okay yeah these are some subclasses of byte based these are some subclasses of character based <coughs> they may be a <laughs> have to read or write functions within them, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like for example, file input stream must be having the read function, file output stream must be having the write function, okay. So now, let's discuss about system.out.println and what does this mean? System, system .out dot out dot println. Okay. Can you explain this? System is the class in which we are using this. What is out? Out, out is an object. No, static object. Static print stream. This is a function. Out not function. It is a variable which has been initialized as an object, stream object connected with the what console. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stream object connected to console, okay? okay. And uh, print ln may be a function in the print stream, okay? Yeah. So system dot in is also there. So in is what? It is an input stream type object. Okay. Stream in it goes to stream object object connected to keyboard okay yep connected to the keyboard so can we do system dot out dot write or not mm. because out is the output stream type object maybe it is surely possible, right? Mm, we can pass, for example, 65. What happens? It writes what? It prints um, A, okay? Yeah. Because it is taking the integer equivalent of the byte that is going to be written. Yeah. But in print ln, if you provide 65, it will write 65 itself, okay? Okay. Yeah. But the system dot in and this is not out, they are byte based in nature, are you getting? Mm -hmm. In real projects, byte based are to be avoided wherever possible characters based should be utilized, okay? 
character based streams are better than byte based for the purpose of internationalization okay okay in java we have internationalization api and is supported through character based streams so wherever possible we should use character based streams so system.in and system.out being byte based whenever we want to use it in real project we should convert them to character based streams okay there is a inbuilt class called input stream reader input stream reader that converts from what input stream reader isr equals new input stream reader <coughs> and we pass the system dot in here okay like this so you can say you have got a character based stream object connected with the what keyboard isn't it yes now to increase the performance you can further put or unwrap buffered reader over it buffered reader br mm -hmm. equals to new buffered reader and we pass the isr within it okay okay got it right Yes. Why buffering is important? To increase the performance. Yes. If I'm feeling thirsty, I go to your house. You bring one drop of water from the tap and give it to me, and again go back to bring one more drop of water. Okay, that decreases yes. the performance. You are going to and fro. Okay. Yes. So to increase the performance, you can take a glass and put under the tap, fill it up, and bring it to me. Right? Yeah. Similarly, buffering increases the performance. Now we have br dot read is possible, right? Yeah. Because the read function is still in the subclass, so we'll use this approach in our programming now. Okay. Mm -hmm. To if you want to take inputs from the keyboard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please uh, take a screenshot of this.